Hey guys, it's Ryan, and here should be the final video of this, um, this series on orthodontic treatment. And so let's pick up where we left off and talk about complex anterior open bite. Um, so I have to admit, I just stopped the previous video early because my throat was hurting, so I had to drink some water. <laughs> but anyway, um, so complex anterior open bite is otherwise known as like a long face um, skeletal discrepancy because the front it, because it appears that the face is longer because the um, anterior part of the bite is left open and so I'm going to show you a diagram that should really help with that vi with visualizing that so it's typically found whereas simple anterior open bite was found in children this is a vertical discrepancy we're talking mostly about adolescents and adults here so we're beyond the thumb sucking stage um, and this is a skeletal problem. And so the features of this include the posterior maxilla tipping down, downward and backward rotation of the mandible, a steep mandibular plane angle, and excessive eruption of posterior teeth. That sounds like a lot of gibberish, but it actually makes a lot of sense. So here's this cool uh, diagram of uh, the craniofacial complex, all five components. So we have the the cranium, the you know the cranium, the cranial base here, the maxilla, the maxillary teeth, the mandible, and the mandibular teeth. So, what happens in this um, skeletal discrepancy? Well, we have the posterior maxilla tipping down, and the downward and backward rotation of the mandible. And so what happens, and you can notice this steep mandibular plane angle here, and you get excessive eruption of the posterior teeth. So now, now there's this huge open gap in the anterior region of the mouth. And so that's our complex anterior open bite. So again, check this out. Here we go. This is where we started, and boom, that's where we are now. So that's a skeletal problem. It goes deeper than just the teeth. This whole craniofacial complex is um, off. So our treatment options are a little bit more complicated now. We can either modify growth if we're early enough. We could catch it before it gets too out of whack and stop it from getting any worse or, or try to treat it. Or if we're too late or if it's too severe, we've got to do orthognathic surgery. So uh, we're back to our profile silhouette here. And um, this treatment option is a growth modification, high pull headgear. So it would be pulling on the maxillary teeth and it would be pulling up towards the back of the head where the headgear is um, putting pressure on the head. So um, equal and opposite forces here. And it's attempting to maintain the vertical position of the maxilla so it doesn't go any further down. It intrudes the upper molars to attempt to close the bite because the more those posterior molars are erupted, the, the more open the bite's going to be. So if we can push those in, we can attempt to close the bite. The force vector should be driven through the trifurcation, which would be um, the center of resistance for that tooth. Uh, so we're not doing any tipping or sticking with, um, you know, nice uh, intruding force. And then we could also attach it to a maxillary splint that attaches to all the maxillary teeth, which would be nice because then we could uh, work on getting a whole, you know, quadrant, whole posterior segment of teeth intruded. Um, now, this is, just to note, this is really hard to treat. This is a very poor prognosis with this headgear. Um, so I did want to mention one thing too, is, um, there are a bunch of studies done, like is tongue thrust, uh, causing this? Could it be causing dental anterior open bite, simple or complex? And it, it definitely does, as far as the research, research says, it does not cause this, um, discrepancy. Tongue thrust is an adaptation to anterior open bite to create a seal for swallowing, it's not the cause of it. So, you know, I have anterior open bite because I'm class three. So you might notice I have a little bit of a lisp. That's part of the adaptation. I also have to stick my tongue forward 
between my teeth every time I swallow, if I tried to stick it to the roof of my mouth, it would be almost impossible to, I'd be swallowing a bunch of air, it's very difficult. So it's just a natural um, accommodation to having this open space in the anterior region of your mouth. Okay, another way to treat this would be using bite blocks. And so this is like this piece of a, you know, acrylic or whatever, you can use different materials you can even just like put a bond some orthodontic cement to the occlusal surfaces of these posterior teeth so they stay apart. And this blocks further eruption of the posterior teeth and allows eruption of the anterior teeth to fill in that space. Um, and it's usually built into some functional appliance, um, you know, an Erbst appliance or something. Um, now, this doesn't really do that much because. You, you can only erupt the teeth so much, so this isn't going to fix like a severe open bite. You need to look at surgery for that. And now you have deep bite, which is the other end of the spectrum, also dental and skeletal variations. And so this time we have over eruption of the mandibular incisors um, for the dental, at least, and that's when it's like piercing into the palatal mucosa. Uh, this would be a class two malocclusion we're talking dental here, so not skeletal, but this is class two malocclusion. Um, and the treatment would be to intrude the anteriors, allow eruption of the posteriors, so to open the bite. Remember that eruption in the posteriors is linked to opening a bite. Um, that's about it for that one. Now, skeletal deep bite is the pretty much the exact opposite from the complex anterior open bite or skeletal anterior open bite. So this is like the exact opposite of that. So instead of long face, it's short face. And the features are uh, completely opposite. So we have a long mandibular ramus. Um, and here I'll show you this is the normal. And we have long mandibular ramus, upward and forward rotation of the mandible, a low mandibular plane angle, usually a class two malocclusion with a div two, which is a dumping of the incisors, and a decreased eruption of posterior teeth. So get ready for this one. Here's it normal, and then boom, we get the longer mandibular ramus, um, upward and forward rotation of the mandible, so it's opposite this time. And so now we have shorter face in the front and longer um, longer, you know, craniofacial complex posteriorly. So now we, um, we get the opposite. We have decreased eruption of posterior teeth. So this is going to require growth modification. And so the opposite of high pull headgear would be low pull headgear. So instead of pulling up and back, we pull down and back. And so this is to extrude upper molars and to open the bite. And this is actually reasonable to treat, has a decent prognosis. And now our, for our bite block, we could use a deep bite functional appliance. So instead of blocking these, we would only allow the mandibular posterior to erupt. So we'd block all the anteriors and block the maxillary um, posteriors. And we would allow these to erupt essentially to level an excessive curve of speed as the face height would increase during this treatment. All right, guys. Hey, if you made it all the way to the end, thanks so much for watching. Leave a like at this video uh, if you found it helpful. And um, let me know in the comments if you guys want to see different topics. Um, I love making these videos, so thanks again for watching, guys. Uh, I'll see you all next time.